Will pyrolutamide be another minoxidil, another CB0301, meaning giving you hair thickness and hair regrowth improvements in the first six months, as shown in this study, but after the six month mark, actually quietly decreasing its efficacy as it was the case with minoxidil and CB0301. Because so far, there don't seem to be any answers on this. So in this video, I decided to share with you the latest news and updates on pyrolutamide KX826 that you should know about before you actually consider including it in your anti-hair loss protocol. Before we start, as always, shout out to our sponsor GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. Pyrolutamide is the new potential anti-androgen for treating male pattern baldness that is still in the research phase, by the way. It has fortunately Unfortunately, already passed the phase number one and phase number two of the clinical human trials successfully with a promising effectiveness of 22.7% target area hair count improvement after six months. That's the gross number. The net improvement is a little bit lower. 15.7% in six months and it has pretty low side effect profile. Now we are expecting results of the trial number three of uh, on 416 people to be finalized and i hope they will announce it in the first quarter of 2023 unfortunately even this third trial is only observing those 416 subjects in a 24 week period that means only six months it's not going to be a one-year study so we don't know how much increase or decrease in terms of efficacy pyrolutamide will have from the six month to 12 months. If pyrolutamide is going to be able to maintain that net 15.7% target area hair count improvement from the six month mark to 12 month mark, that would be amazing to be honest. Even though it's not FDA approved yet, even though there are not even official results from the third trial on pyrolutamide out there, some people, believe me or not, already decided to start using pyrolutamide because there are obviously businesses and manufacturers in China that are able to produce pyrolutamide and there are also sellers in the US or Europe who are able to purchase from these suppliers and resell it, repackage it in Europe or United States and then sell this pyrolutamide Lutamide in a 0.5% concentration, meaning 5 mg of pyrolutamide powder per 1 milliliter of the liquid. And for the liquid, meaning vehicle, consisting out of inactive ingredients, they use usually the 70-30 ratio of alcohol and propylene glycol. Okay. Now, I'm not suggesting you guys to start using it yet. I wouldn't be doing it myself because there are also some uh, issues with quality control, especially when ordering from these uh, sellers online who are sourcing it from China from God knows who and testing it by third parties God knows uh, what third parties do they have some conflict of interest trying to make quick money uh, and kind of approving and giving pyrolutamide much better purity score than it really has just to make more profits from hooked audience that is super impatient and wants to get their hands on that treatment as soon as possible maybe yeah so i would not be risking it right now now as far as before and after results of people who have tried pyrolutamide already there's probably no more better place but also no more controversial place to look for those than to go to reddit now if you go to reddit there are obviously some reports like for example this guy it's actually one of the most famous uh, posts if you go there who claimed to be using pyrolutamide 0.5 percent for six weeks and went from this to this now i do not put a lot of credibility into that uh, because again it's an anecdotal report it's just one person he could be using fibers and even if he's not it's just still just one person now that's one thing you can check out that post in the link below just 
for curiosity, okay? Don't put so much emphasis on that one report. Now, there are also people uh, who are asking, like, now that pyrolutamide has been available online for a while, has anyone had good results? Interestingly, there is somebody who commented with many upvotes here. I think it's killing people. Uh, joking, right? It's not, guys. All the new people who start result tracking threads disappear. So people are making fun that it's killing people. It's not, right? But they're making fun that people who start kind of or announce on Reddit like, hey, I'm starting pyrolutamide today. Check out this thread I'm going to be posting regularly. These people, they're not, never going to be heard of after maybe a month or later. So do they really get bad results or do they actually get good results and just stop posting because they just get their hair back and kind of disappear and you never hear from them. So this is something that it's quite controversial and we unfortunately do not have any good results so far and neither we will have these results by the announcement of the third trial results from Kintor because this is just going to be still just six month trial even with the finalization and the revealing the results of the third trial by Kintor who is the official company behind doing all that research on pyrolutamide and trying to make it FDA approved and then officially kind of market it for the whole world even with that data, we will not be able to tell how long term of a treatment pyrolutamide will be able to be for hair loss. We will not know that until there will be more studies, long term studies, one, two, five or even 10 year studies done on pyrolutamide as it was the case with finasteride. There was already FDA approved in 1997, but we didn't have any proper long term study on finasteride until like mid 2000 or 2010, where some long term studies started to pop up and we started to actually see like wow okay finasteride could be actually that long-term treatment that we actually never had for male pattern baldness and that was the time when also this longest finasteride study that we have by now the 10-year study on Korean men kind of uh, appeared they started doing the study in 2009 and finished it 10 years later in 2019 on one milligram finasteride per day they started the study already eight years since finasteride was actually FDA approved. So for now and for the next years um, to come, even with the reality of pyrolutamide being FDA approved eventually, we will probably need to rely on these anecdotal reports from people and guys on Reddit online forums who will be reporting whether pyrolutamide is working for them long term or not. And it will be pretty much like done kind of like on the go. So that's how we will actually find out whether it's working for you or not long term. So now back to the discussion, will pyrolutamide be another minoxidil or another CB0301 Brizula that will just be able to get you some hair thickening and regrowth initially after six months and then just slowly and quietly slowing down its efficacy until it's eventually not even able to keep your hair in the long run. Now fortunately for all of us who are interested in keeping the most of our hair that we still have for as long as it's humanly possible, I don't think pyrolutamide is just going to be another minoxidil or another CB0301. This is the reason why. If you look at minoxidil, it obviously has that very fast growth period that gives you results quickly, but then it declines. However, we should not forget that minoxidil neither blocks DHT in your scalp, nor it blocks the androgen receptor or restricts the androgen receptor of your follicle from interacting with the androgen like testosterone or DHT. That's what pyrolutamide, on the other hand, is doing. So it's definitely going to be more long term of a treatment than minoxidil. How long term is it going to be compared to CB0301 and finasteride? Now, let's start with CB0301 first. So on this chart, you can see binding affinities of CB0301, but also testosterone, DHT and pyrolutamide for comparisons. Binding affinity represents the strength of the binding interaction between the molecule of CB0301, for example, and the androgen receptor of the hair follicles in this example. As you can see, CB0301 has the highest value of 40 nanomole, while DHT and pyrolutamide, for example, have lowest values around 0.25 nanomoles, Nm. However, the lowest the value, the better for a particular antiandrogen. Let me explain. One nanomole is these many molecules, the long number you can see right here, okay? So you need 40 times this big number of molecules 
to occupy 50% of androgen receptor in a particular hair cell, as an example. However, the smaller the nanomole value is, like with pyrolutamide, the less of the total amount of molecules you need for a 50% androgen receptor occupation in a hair cell. We know that testosterone and DHT both compete for the androgen receptor and want to bind to it. DHT normally wins because it has a stronger binding affinity. However, by introducing pyrolutamide, we could make a theoretical assumption that if there is one molecule of DHT and one molecule of pyrolutamide, if pyrolutamide has a higher binding affinity, it would attach to androgen receptor first and leave DHT and testosterone floating around, as you can see at the bottom where pyrolutamide occupies three out of six androgen receptor of a hair cells. Now, if we compare the pyrolutamide to finasteride, we can see that on paper, it has slightly better net target area hair count improvement compared to finasteride after six months. That means it can probably work a little bit faster towards the hair thickening and hair regrowth after six months compared to finasteride. However, after 12 months or two, three, four years, we don't know where it's gonna be better or at least as good as finasteride. We want to have it at least as good as finasteride even after four or five years, because then you can only see it as that ultimate hope for replacing finasteride in the long run and not just in six months. Then I think it will certainly have its limitations as any other topical treatment. For example, if you are a hair transplant patient, and you actually want to keep your transplanted hair healthy and thick for many, many years and decades. In such case, this treatment, pyrolutamide topical 0.5%, may come short unless you are also going to be applying it to your transplanted areas. Because again, there may be some miniaturization and degradation of the transplanted hair in the very, very long run as well, if you are not using any other treatments whatsoever. That's just what I was observing over the last six years of big being active in this field and there's actually no such study that would confirm this belief and observation that I have. So I think I'm allowed to think that and believe that it's true. In such case, I still believe there will be place for oral medications like oral minoxidil or oral finasteride and these medications being involved in hair loss protocols of uh, patients who have undergone hair transplants in the past for better not only donor area hair preservation but also transplanted hair preservation because I really doubt that people will want to be applying uh, the topical pyrolutamide on the transplanted hair and also on their donor hair to improve the donor area quality, become a better hair transplant candidate, which again is needed by some people if they want to get their hair back to the next level and define uh, the hairline or add more hair to the area on their head where not even pyrolutamide, not even finasteride with any other treatment in combined would be able to regrow that hair, okay? So in such case, it's important to use oral medication. And even if you would be using, I mean, topically like pyrolutamide, like literally on your whole, had it would be super expensive and you would also be exposing yourself to like way too much of a concentration of the pyrolutamide okay so uh, in such case i think oral medication will still have its place that's all i'm trying to say with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this video now for all of you guys who are interested in me helping you out one-on-one -on -one with getting your hair back via hair transplant with the treatment helping you make the best possible decision, take the best possible step you can do from right now to stop your hair loss as soon as possible and get it back with a hair transplant. Make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can learn more about my services. There are one-on-one -on -one services and I will be happy to help you out in person. Take care and see you soon in another video.